Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Rudy Space. I am Dr. Samandarshan Mahanti, and today we will discuss about the two stroke compression ignition engine. Till now, we have discussed in detail about the four stroke spark ignition engine, then four stroke compression ignition engine, as well as the two stroke spark ignition engine. Today, we will discuss in detail the two stroke compression ignition engine. We also call it a diesel engine because the compression ignition engine uses diesel as a fuel. So first I will discuss the different components which are used in the compression ignition engine and then how actually the two stroke compression ignition engine works. So the different parts are shown here. You do have a fuel injector and the fuel injector actually injects fuel into the system and that is specific to the compression ignition engine. Fuel injector is never used when it comes to your spark ignition engine. You do have a fuel feed pump which has not been shown which actually fits the fuel into the system through the fuel injector. Then you have three ports, the inlet port or intake port, the exhaust port as well as the transport port. Through the intake port or the inlet port, the air is actually drawn into the crankcase. Through the transfer port, the air that is drawn into the crankcase is sent to the combustion chamber and through the exhaust port, the burnt air fuel mixture which is incapable of producing any more power is adjusted to the surrounding. This actually shows the piston and this is the connecting rod. Connecting rod is actually connected to the piston. This one is your piston pin, we also call it guardian pin or wrist pin. The small end of the connecting rod is actually connected to the piston. The big end of the connecting rod is actually connected to the crank shaft by means of a crank pin. And the function of this connecting rod crank mechanism is to convert the reciprocating motion of the piston into the rotary motion of the crankshaft. You do have a crankcase which actually provides housing to the crankshaft. A deflector has been shown and the function of this deflector is to deflect the burnt air fuel mixture through the exhaust port. Apart from that, we do have a flywheel which actually works as an energy accumulator. It stores the energy developed during the power stroke and supplies the same during the ideal stroke. We do not have a carburetor arrangement when it comes to your compression ignition engine because the air fuel mixture is not prepared. This is due to the reason that the fuel that is used in case of compression ignition engine is your diesel and diesel is less volatile compared to that of petrol. So no carburetor would thoroughly mix diesel with air. So due to this reason, carburetor is not an integral part of the compression ignition engine. Then we'll come to the operating diagram of the two-stroke compression ignition engine. Here also you can see the components which I have discussed in detail. Of course, in this figure, the deflector has not been shown, but deflector is actually integral part of any internal combustion engine when it comes to the two-stroke cycle engines. Now, the two strokes are known as your downstroke and your upstroke. 
all of us know that in case of your four stroke cycle engine you do have separate strokes for suction compression expansion and exhaust but when it comes to your two stroke cycle engine all these operations like suction compression expansion and exhaust are completed in two strokes or a single revolution of the crankshaft and what is a stroke stroke is actually the distance traversed by the piston in moving from top dead center to bottom dead center or vice versa top dead center is actually the topmost position the piston can reach in case of a vertical engine and bottom dead center is the bottommost position the piston can reach in case of vertical engine in case of horizontal engine the stroke is the distance traversed in moving from inner dead center to outer dead center or vice versa so the two strokes in case of your two stroke cycle engine are known as your down stroke and your up stroke first i will tell you what is up stroke and then i will tell you what is down stroke i've told you that in up stroke the piston moves from bdc to tdc so as it moves from bdc to tdc it actually uncovers the inlet port and through the inlet port the air is drawn into the crankcase so you can see this as it is moving from btc to tdc it uncovers the inlet port and through this air is drawn into the crankcase simultaneously as the piston is moving from btc to tdc the air that is present on the top of the piston is compressed to the clearance volume the clearance volume is actually the space between the top dead center position and the cylinder head just before the up stroke is completed the fuel injector actually injects diesel into the system and for that a fuel feed pump is provided and the diesel is actually injected at a pressure higher than the pressure that is maintained inside the engine cylinder because all of us know that fluids flow from high pressure zone to low pressure zone so at atmospheric pressure if fuel is injected fuel will never enter the combustion chamber at the end of the up stroke as the fuel is injected by means of a fuel injector it will immediately undergo combustion what is the reason for this because due to movement of the piston from btc to tdc significant amount of compression has taken place and this heat of compression is sufficient to ignite the diesel which is injected into the combustion chamber you should remember that the compression ratio in case of compression ignition engine is deliberately kept higher than that of spark ignition engine because in case of spark ignition engine the compression actually increases its pressure and temperature but it is not sufficient to ignite the charge you do have a spark plug which actually ignites the air fuel mixture but in case of compression ignition engine the heat of compression should be sufficient to ignite the fuel that is injected now the question arises why we are not employing a carburetor when it comes to your compression ignition engine the re major reason for that is that diesel is less volatile 
compared to that of petrol and thorough mixing of diesel with air is not practically possible. So if you incorporate a carburetor, it will not prepare the mixture that is desired. So a part of the diesel will not be ignited if carburetor is employed when it comes to your compression ignition engine. That also I have told you while giving a brief introduction about the different engine components. Then during the downstroke, the piston actually moves from TDC to BDC. So as it moves from TDC to BDC through the exhaust port, the burn products are exhausted and simultaneously as the piston moves from TDC to BDC, it actually compresses the air that is present in the crankcase and through this transport port, the air which is drawn into the engine cylinder during the previous stroke is sent to the combustion chamber. So in this way actually the system works. In the previous lecture, while discussing about the two-stroke spark ignition engine, some of the viewers have requested me to elaborately explain the function of the different ports. Let me tell you that the function of the different ports is to do the same operation as the valves in case of four stroke cycle engine. In that case, you have two valves. One is inlet or intake valve and the second one is your exhaust valve. In this case, we have three ports. Inlet port through which the air is drawn into the crankcase. Transport port through which the air in the crankcase is sent to the combustion chamber. Then the exhaust port through which the burn products are removed to the atmosphere. So now I don't think there would be any sort of doubt as regards to the functioning of the different ports. Now in case of your two stroke cycle engine out of two strokes that is upstroke and downstroke the power is generated only during the downstroke because the fuel is injected at the end of the upstroke and due to the combustion of the fuel huge amount of thermal and pressure energy is developed as a result it forces the piston to move in downward direction. All of us know the function of the flywheel. Flywheel actually works as an energy accumulator. It stores the energy that is developed during the power stroke and supplies the same during the idle stroke. Now, I sincerely believe that after this lecture, we have discussed in detail about the four-stroke SI engine, four-stroke CI engine, two-stroke SI engine, and two-stroke CI engine. If you have any doubts related to all these four lectures, please do ask questions so that I can answer these questions. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not done so till now. Hope to see you soon for another lecture.